uh, it is Friday. I have to look. All the days are getting mixed up. Uh, today's Friday. It's the day after the tornado. And uh, yeah, thanks to everyone for leaving those really uh, nice comments in the in the comment section below of my last video and asking if Carol and I and the family are okay and everything's fine. Like I said, Carol was really close. I had literally just passed that area within an hour of the, the tornado striking or coming down, but I was about 20 kilometers south of there and actually, yeah, around 20 kilometers. And, uh, but Carol was right, right parallel <laughs> with the, the tornado. So I think it was like the storm was right over top of her. And then eventually it touched down as it passed her maybe about five, six kilometers, uh, to the east, something like that. But, uh, this is the, this is how much flooding we got. So it's flooded all the way back there. Um, yeah, it was more flooded than this. It's kind of all dissipated a little bit gotten into the ground anyway so one of my jobs today is Carol bought roof racks for the Atlas and uh, we're gonna be taking the Atlas on our camping trip we would take the Tiguan but the Tiguan doesn't have a trailer hitch and I think this was cheaper to get this than a trailer hitch installed on Carol's car and this is a bigger vehicle vehicle anyway so Let's open this thing up. Okay, number one thing, instructions. That is a big book. That is a big book. Crossbars. Ooh, lots of keys. Lots of keys. It's got like a bit of plastic there. Just tells you if it's the front or not. And this is the front bar. Found the English. There's <laughs> pretty much every language in there. Pretty much only two pages one and two of English and then it's got like Russian and all kinds of other languages in here so I'm going to read through the warnings the notes more warnings more warnings and uh, we'll try our best to uh, put it in correctly uh, it looks like it's got its own turning thingy on the side uh, on the Tiguan you actually have to have a device and uh, keep it in the car at all times just in case you need to remove them or put them on but this one's got its own tightening thing which is kind of cool pretty straightforward but again I'm gonna read these warnings so it says before installing make sure everything is wiped down properly so it doesn't scratch just making sure there done Let's put the front one on and then there's a, you'll hear a click when it gets to the right Newtons. Driving direction, okay. We need the key. There we go. It's nice and level. I'm just going to make sure it's in the right distance that way. Right. Okay, just in front of the car pillar. <laughs> Lots of little micro adjustments. Jeez. Probably be easier if I had two hands instead of holding a camera. There we go. A little bit faster. That's the right spot. Apparently there's a click you'll hear when it gets to the right tightness. 
Did you hear it click? I was getting it pretty tight. I didn't hear any clicking. No clicking. Um, these little rubber things here. I'm not sure why. It also said make sure that one of these is pointed up like that. Another thing you can do is you can install this rubber and that just uh, you can install the rubber in there. That'll stop the top of the bar from being scratched. Put something on top, it won't scratch. I just gotta make sure that they're the right distance apart. They also give you a ruler right on the side of the book just in case you don't have one. And I believe it said 440 millimeters from the front edge. So there's to there, and there's to there. So these bars could go just a little bit closer to the front. Reread this uh, position, the front carrier on both sides, distance of 440 millimeters from the front edge of the roof railing. I, I did it from the edge of the roof, but it's from the roof railing to here, which is exactly where I had it. Always uh, check twice, people. And then again, the, the next measurement is uh, 750 millimeters or 28 inches from there to there. Ah, float plane. So we'll do a quick measurement and make sure. For all you Americans out there, that's uh, 250 millimeters to there. 500 and so this front back one has to go forward just a little bit perfect nice so once again I'm going to try this to see hear the click. I didn't really hear it click, but it felt like it clicked. I don't really hear like a noticeable click, but I can feel it. When it gets to a certain point, it just kind of like does a little bit of a bump. That's it, they're all tight. Almost all done. I think these little, this rubber thing is too long, so I'm gonna have to cut, cut off what the remainder is. So you don't actually have to guide it through. You can just put it on and push down. I said I'm gonna have to give it a little trim. Unless it's supposed to do that, I doubt it. I don't know why they give you too much. <laughs> Two to go.
sweet, sharp looking. Just gonna make sure everything's good to go. Put the instructions in my house, just in case I forget how to put them on. And we will uh, make sure we get all the right keys. Another key to add to my keychain. Done. That's how you know if you're Canadian. Right there. Gotta tidy all this stuff up. We're good to go. Now these are the kayak carriers that we have. And uh, let's see. So you unscrew these until it's wide enough to fit around your roof rack. This opens up, tips the way angle you want. Clicking for this, just keep going until your desired tightness. That's what it looks like. It's going to be a bit of a challenge uh, putting the kayak on this vehicle. This is the tallest vehicle that we've had to put our kayaks on. Carol's home. Just in time to check my work. Make sure. Hello. See, I told you she'd say it's a good job. See, it's just in time to check my work. It's good to have somebody to check your work. That way you don't have a catastrophic failure. <laughs> 